so hello guys uh, today in this session i will talk about all the test and the concept in one video starting from the basic to the advanced right so it will cover one video will be very good with the test and the concepts and uh, you can answer any questions in the interview right before to start this is brief about me okay so like my facebook page subscribe my channel and this is my github url where you will get all the source code and uh, i come from mechanical engineering background i'm from uh, bihar mujafferpur i studied from big bangalore so <coughs> before 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 jumping into a tutorial i would like to show you something so this is my playlist i always do that because you know uh, whenever new students comes uh, he will not have any doubt okay so bookmark this url you can just bookmark this url and if you go to the playlist you know here you have all the playlists so based on your desire you can uh, go through the playlist and any playlist so let's say if you want to learn core java go to the core java and you have inside that you have a playlist right uh, related to core java now we will start with the topic so i just created on project test ng and we will start with the first example and we'll go ahead so i'll make one class here and here i will write you know all annot annotations right this is my first class here what i'll do is i'll start with the basic concepts and you know we will go ahead uh, okay so what i'll do is just write at b control space bar okay at b control space bar so you have something for before test here i will write uh, public void i will just write you know uh, so i'll keep the same name i'll keep before test and i will tell you how these annotations works in the real time okay what is the benefit of that so you know that the method name starts from a small letter so i'm just writing a small letter here and you can see that the moment i wrote before test annotations see this before test annotations got imported from the test engine package and here uh, we will just write one you know print statement because i will show you in which sequence this all execution happens then no not before test so, so before class actually not before test okay before class then uh, i'll write at capital d con control space bar test and then i will write public void test one you have one test and i will i'll just write the print statement as far as okay space bar and we will see that I will write here test one. Similarly, I will copy this and I'll paste here, and I will write one more test. Right. Two tests we have. Then we have a before class. I will write one after class. So what I will do is I will just change to after after class and delete this and change this to after okay i'm oh, sorry okay copy this change it here now uh, we have something called before method so as of now i'm just teaching you the annotations then i will tell you the sequence so we have something called before method okay and here i'll copy the same thing i'll copy the same thing and i'll write it here and i will change to b small b and i'll copy this before method and i'll write in the print statement okay so just focus on the annotations try to learn these annotations before method similarly you have something called after method these annotations called after method after method and here change to after okay copy this right to the print statement okay so import this test entry file then uh, we have so we have something called we have something called before test 
before test so here also i'll do before test method and i'll copy this and paste it here why it is giving error for us there are some method i think yeah here we have to write for class it was duplicate method so before test similarly we have something called after test. this is very important for the interview people will ask like how what are the annotations and how sequence will work right so when we when we know that we can easily explain in the interview this is called after import the after test and this after test here this will be after class actually we have written wrong earlier next we have after test then copy this both and we have few more called after sort okay change to after and change to shoot okay here copy this paste it here and then you have something called before suit so these annotations the best part is they are not uh, you know they are not bother for the sequence no matter what sequence you write uh, it will run in their own sequence okay so we can write you know top bottom but on the runtime sequence will be followed okay so we have something called before test uh, so before test okay sorry not before test it should be uh, before sweet yeah and uh, here we can write before sweet copy this paste it here okay <coughs> so we have written the annotations you can see that all the imports okay all the imports got imported after class after method after suite after test before class before method before test before test uh, and sorry before suit before test and test right so these annotations has the sequence okay these annotations has the sequence everything executes in the sequential way so what starts first so what happens is whenever you are running a script and when you have a before suite First, before suite will get triggered, then before test will get triggered because it's before every test. So your before test will get triggered, then your before class will get triggered, then your before method will get triggered, and then test will first test will get triggered, then you know after method will get triggered. After first test, your after method will get triggered, then again for the test two, since we have two tests, again the before method will get triggered, after method will get triggered, and then you know sequence will be reversed. Then it will be you know uh, before test sorry after test not after test it should be after class after test after suit i just run that so that you know we'll understand the sequence how the sequence are followed so i just ran that when we'll go to the console you can see that here see the console output see that's how the sequence will be followed first before suit then before test then before test okay why two before test somewhere we did mistake while writing okay here we did before test actually we should have written before class this is the spelling mistake here not a spelling mistake the way we have written is wrong and here it should be after class then before method sweet test yeah that's fine now now run that and we'll see that we'll learn the sequence from here so you can see that before suit before test then before class then before method then test and then after method so what happens this before method will get called before every test and after method will get called after every test so there are two tests in our in our case we have two tests here okay again i will modify to two it was one so you know it was slight confusing for us now it will be very clear for us we can see that now it's a very clear here right so before method got triggered before test and then after method then again before method and before test so this before method will make sure that whenever we have certain piece of code which we want to execute before every test we can go for the before method and then again after method right then again whatever started in the same way you'll get the ending 
so you have something called you know after method after class after test but where is after suite right you have after suite here so the after suite once your execution will get over your result has been uh, you know printed then your after suite will get executed you can see that the after suite that's how the test and annotations work so if you have five test five times your before method and after method will get called okay for every test your before method and after method will get called but remaining annotations will get called only once so the way it started okay the way it started it is ending in the different way so the way it was started from before suit before test before class before method see the ending is after method after class you know after test and then you know after suit so the way it starts the way it ends so this is how we can run by doing a right click how to write the test ng xml it's very simple right click on that go to test ng okay right click on the file go to test ng convert to test ng do not do not generate we want to learn we want to write our own okay so now right click on this go to test write a file say that basic annotations dot xml click enter click enter why i took those two lines because this 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 two line we cannot remember this two line we cannot remember now write first is always sweet the sweet name so i will write basic annotations within a suite okay in the project within the suite we have a test there can be multiple test right so again test name also keep the same always just write angle bracket everything will come automatically then here again just write angle bracket classes because one test can have multiple classes we can test multiple classes within the classes again write angle bracket and just write class so the class name how to write the class name you should always write class name is called you know package name and class name if you look at here inside src test java you have test ng the package name so always always starts after you know src test java if you go here you can see that uh, you can see that here after in src test java your package name is test ng so just write here your package name test ng dot your class name okay your class name this class name so this is your class name just paste it here when you'll paste it here if you'll run from here you can see that you know your execution will executed your test will get executed see your test is getting executed and now you have designed your own test engine.xml now <coughs> we will learn we will learn in the test engine how to group the test script so let's say you are working for a project okay you are working for a project group test groups test yeah or i can I just write you know group test okay so you are working in the project and you have designed 10 scripts now tomorrow uh, your manager comes to you and will tell you boss i want to execute only certain set of test scripts i don't want to execute all the test scripts right i want to do only sanity or i want to do only regressions or i want to do only smoke so to do that our test should be grouped our test should be grouped right how to group that it's very simple let's say public void test one this is a test one here just write at test right at test and import that import test ng make sure that you are importing test ng because i am using a test ng create one more test create one more test create one more test there are four tests now so i have four tests in my one test class right but assume that these all four tests are not required for for a smoke or for sanity or for regressions right so here what i will do after test case put the parenthesis and just write groups okay groups just do g control space bar click on groups so this groups what we can do is in parenthesis we can write this test will work for sanity also as well as this test will work for regressions also okay this is my group okay now copy this groups or not copy that just create a parenthesis just try g control space for groups again do is equal to and say that this group will work for sanity and it will work for database test so you have a database test also database verifications you have right again copy this i want to write again and again paste it here and say that 
this group will purely work for sanity okay it will purely work for sanity and uh, again copy this and say that this group purely work for uh, uh, regression okay this group purely work for regression and you have something called at before class you have a at before class in your script so here you have to write public void setup so you are doing some setup in the before class now the problem here what happens is when your before class has no groups when you run this script your before class will not work because you will decide on the runtime which group you want to run that so even for the group class you have to include all the groups so no matter what groups your before class will get triggered right to do that it's very simple just write all the groups here so this will de this will you know no matter what group you are running on the runtime your before class will get triggered okay your before class will get triggered we will see that how it works okay so we have written like this and just write syso and in this syso uh, better you know put this as a print statement so that for us it is easy for us we can understand okay because yeah we have a multiple multiple choice i mean multiple uh, we have sanity and regression so just remove that so it will be a single string right fine now yeah now again uh, copy these groups from here as well so double quote write this remove this this is very important uh, usually when you have sanity and database all the scripts and let's say there are some changes in the database and you want to verify that it will help you actually to do that to achieve that if you have a groups in your scripts because every time we don't want to run everything because there is some small patch uh, which is going and just we want to make sure that our scripts are working fine just run your groups and also i'll tell you when everything will get executed though you have a group right so it's a very good concept here groups uh yeah so our groups are ready okay so our groups are ready now <clears throat> what happens if i run from here and here also write one saying that uh, before setup or just write setup okay now if i run from here there is no usefulness of groups okay everything will get executed you can see that you know everything will get executed there i mean group will not work out so that way when you want to run everything just do right click run as when you want to control that okay when you want to control that it's very simple in the same basic annotations what i will do is i'll just design one test here just i will just control uh, uh, just do angle bracket t okay so within test you can do one more test do test what happened one second am i doing something wrong my starting test is ending test in the bracket test should come ideally why test is not coming ideally test should come okay one more test we can write but i can see that we are not receiving the test once again i will clean my project because you should be able to write okay one minute what i'll do is right click uh open with yeah it's xml editor so ideally we should we should be able to writing here i mean we should be able to write here test with class is coming oh something happened because i cannot see that even my class is coming just now we were doing that and it was working fine all of a sudden so class is not coming no problem if it is not coming copy this test paste it here simple paste it here and give give here a name called groups test okay but ideally when you do again you know add test you can make one more test ideally it should come 
but it is not coming for us unfortunately i'll do f2 and we can just write here okay we can just write here group test but when i will run this test as in test ng dot you know basic annotations or i'll just rename to test ng dot xml because we are we are modifying everything so what i will do i'll just rename this refactor and rename do not write basic annotations just write you know test ng dot x click on ok when we do so now if i do right click runner even in that case everything will get executed okay no matter what it is see you can see that all the tests are getting executed we can see that all the test cases are getting executed right so groups are not working as of now what we can do it's very simple after classes do include uh, so yeah now it is coming i don't know what happened so just click on groups when you when you click on groups within a group you have something called just write angle bracket and you have something called run click on that run inside run you do control and you have something called include so do include name what do you want to run so i want to run sanity okay i want to run sanity now run this test and you dot xml now you'll come to know that so see wherever you had the sanity word got executed sanity regression sanity database sanity and setup why setup the setup because the setup has setup has uh, all the groups okay and a very important learning guys focus here setup has all the groups now interesting part look at the log i that's what i i use only one you know mm, uh, only one test interaction because see after suit is getting executed so after suit the benefit of after suit it will execute after all the tests so as of now i have only two tests so after suit is getting executed now hope hope it is clear for you guys so you can write anywhere after suit but you know it will execute only after all the suits so we have here actually if you look at here after suit we have here right so after all the tests it is getting executed so we learn the group like how group will help us we can group our test case and we can run by writing here what i want to run here i can write here you know database now only database script should get called so if i run this test and dot xml only the test script related to database will get called so you can see that only one script got called setup and database right only one script got called from from this script so from previous script everything is getting called that is fine that we are not bother if you want to disable it just do select everything control backslash it will get disabled now run that only your second class will get called and only you know see your only database group is getting called now what i'll do is let's say <coughs> in the test script we are designing a test script okay and we have a lot of test scripts and everything depends on the login because of some reason your login is failing if my login is failing i don't want to run all the scripts i don't want to Run all, the, run all the scripts so i will make depends on test okay depends on test this is very good actually depends on test what this guy will do is i'll copy from here two scripts i don't want to write again and again so i'll just write here and i don't want groups here groups i don't want group i have already explained so I have test one, test two. So what I will do? Let's say this is your login script, and this is your test two. So just write de control space bar depends on method is equal to write in here login. Okay, this will depends on login, and you have one more method called logout. Okay, two method now. So this guy also depends on login now what will happen is in the login purposefully i will write a sort dot a sort true i will talk about that okay i'm just i have to use now so i'll write false so intentionally i will fail that when i will fail that this will fail so the moment this call will happen first it will make sure that login should pass if the login is not passed these two scripts will get skipped it will not run at all so do here uh, 
don't use GeoGit assertions, use testng assertions. So click on org.txt. Yeah. This you can see that two package got imported. Now do a run as. When we do run as, we can see that you know uh, see the output. One failure, two escapes. Why? Because your login is failing, and because of that, your other scripts are your other scripts are getting skipped because it has dependency. Depends on just write depends on is equal to a square bracket. You can write the login. Now, what will happen is this I am not failing it. This I am not failing it, and here we can depends more than one method. So now my this script will depends on logout also. But now my logout is failing. So assume that you have such scenario, your logout is failing. Now what will happen? This guy will make sure that login should pass. So login will be passed. So this will execute, this will execute, but your this script will fail because you are depending on more than one method. See that? See here? Three run, one failure, one skip. So your failure is this, and your skip is this. If you want to see the test output report just refresh your project so when we refresh that uh, test output uh, report will get generated click on that email.html not like this don't do double click okay it will open the html click on open in the web browser here you can see that one failed one skipped one passed right so logout failed test to skipped and login passed right you can see that even uh, 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 i mean that's how you will get the report now <coughs> we learned about the depends on how we can use the depends on so till here we are good now we'll learn about we'll make a class and i will just we'll talk about parameters let's say we have a lot of test case okay we have a lot of test case and our username password we want to supply through parameter how to achieve that i will tell you how we can achieve that so make one more test here and here remove these groups not required here you have depends on test so just change here depends on depends on test and uh, uh, what you do is take this name change it here okay yeah so this will work out now we have something called parameters so how parameters will work i have a script i want to supply parameters from you know other test how it will work it is very simple copy this test any one test r i just go and write it okay, i am poor in writing but i will write that public void test login you have test login okay you have this test and I want to supply the parameter from the XML. How to do that? So I have a test. I can write here at P capital of uh, control space bar parameters. You can see that here. Some here parameters you will see that. Yeah, test engine questions. Make sure that you are using test engine. Do not use JMIT. Click on that parameters. Okay. Click on that parameters. Why everything is getting imported? Because see this class name and this annotation name should not be same. So just write here parameters in test ng do not keep this parameter name annotations name and class name same otherwise your uh, test ng will not understand okay so here again write p capital control space bar and you have parameters uh, not this one the first one test ng one click on that parenthesis you can write uh, the first parameters is let's say username comma double quote password two parameters you have username and password okay so we cannot write more than uh, one parameters in one we cannot write more than one parameters in one so but it's a parameters i did it should take uh, i did it should take okay so what we can do is uh, parameters i did it should take more than one name but why it is not taking is it expecting in the curly braces? No. 
it's not about curly braces but what we are seeing that it is not yeah i think it, we have to write like this okay in the curly braces now here same thing we can supply same thing we can supply so we have to make a variable called a string same username and again make a string password so this is my script which takes you know even in password right so the problem what will happen is we supply parameters from the external source so what if if i will not run this script through testng.xml it should also work now if i do run run as you know testng actually this will fail this will fail it will say that you know username is required username is required but we are not supplying that right not supplying that so how to design the parameter right test case you have to write at capital o control space bar optional and in a square bracket write that underscore username optio and optional what this will do is if we will not supply through uh, xml then it will take this optional data okay then it will take this optional data so right here password option okay when we do not supply through xml it will take this xml data so if you do now run as and if you have one print statement it's why so control space bar and we can just write username is and we have this username and then you can just write plus and let's say when we write password sorry not this region this region it should be this region password the variable name we have to write here is password okay so let's run that we will see what is happening when i will run that now it will take optional data right it will take optional data which we can see it here so username is equal to username optional password is equal to password optional why because we are not running through testing.xml now what i'll do in the test.x in the test ng.xml i will go and i will add one test here i will add one test here and within the test i will write parameter test and here i will give my test name so i take this test name i will go here in the test ng.xml i will change the class name i will change the class name okay and here I will write underscore or just before we have to write uh, angle bracket again again stopped coming it just now it was coming again stopped coming it what I will do I will just clean one pro clean so I will just clean one project but usually comes okay so we don't have to clean sometimes it happens I don't know for what reason but it happens sometimes So how to write is since it is not coming at, I will take from some other text in your XML. But if you write that parameters, it will come. It's very simple actually. So take these two parameters. Okay. It, ideally it comes, but I don't know why it is not coming. It's not coming, but ideally it comes. So before your test, you can write these annotations. So for this test, this parameter will be taken from from this XML okay okay so parameter will be taken from this XML now if I will trigger this test if I'll trigger this test this parameter will be supplied to this script from the XML and this name should match this username and password should match so let me let me check that the username and password it should match otherwise uh, we will not be able to supply we will not be able to supply both should match so what we'll do is uh, uh, we'll run our testng.xml and we'll see that what is the output. So I ran that. Okay. So there was one failure. That is fine. We have given assertion failure. See, it is taking from the data which we have given to the XML. Username one two three password is equal to one two three. This time it is not taking that username optional password optional because we are running through testng.xml. So whatever data we will write. 
it will go and it will use that so when you have you know let's say 10 test case 10 test kits so all the 10, 10 test cases will take the parameter from here so and this parameter will be applicable only for this test so what what you have to do is if you have 10 test cases meant make all write all the classes here itself then only then only this parameter will be applicable for those tests right in all the test you can go and you can just write you know add parameters username password so whatever test you have the data will be taken from the XML, right these parameters will not be applicable for this test so whatever we write before test annotations that only will consume this data that's how it works so now if i run that so you can see that only one time got executed but the problem only once test got executed the problem is if you write duplicate name test ng will consider only one test so you cannot execute multiple uh, you cannot run the script multiple time it will execute it will consider your test for only one time if you want to really do that you know uh, uh, what we can do is copy this entire thing paste it here and remove everything now your test will execute two times now test ng will consider this as a separate test uh, within the same test if you write multiple class cannot have the same okay again we cannot write more than one test with the same name okay so your test name should be different only test name so what happens is when you are writing multiple class in the same uh, test so same test when you write that what happens is uh, your test ng first it will check that whether you are writing duplicate class or unique class right if it is a duplicate it will remove the duplicacy it will run only one class if you have a unique it will run everything so here your all full test will run only when if the classes are unique okay not duplicate here we have duplicate so to run the duplicate class just make one more class and give the same class here and just change the test name and it will work so you can see that two times is getting executed the test is getting executed two times but when you run from here it will take the optional data that's how you know the parameters work so you can say that here right uh, it is taking now you know optional data right that's how the parameters works now <coughs> we will talk about so from the test on ng.xml what i will do i will remove this because i don't want to keep this i am just teaching you how we can learn all the test ng in one video okay now what i will do is i'll make one uh, class called data provider this data provider test okay this data provider test what it will do is okay when we let's say you have a test method when you have a test method and the test method data provider test let's say we have a test okay public void test we have a test now when we write add on this test right uh yeah so just import that and let's say we have sysho and we have username comma we have password so normally when we run that okay sorry we have to write like this plus so normally when we run that normally when when we run that this test will execute only one time right this test will execute only one time you can see that username password is getting printed here right? so normally it will run only one time normally this script will run only one time but when you have a data provider your same script will work for multiple times so how to do that make one method public void data provider okay and data provider just write a data provider test and you have to use annotations at data provider you have to use at data provider okay give the name of data provider so name is equal to data okay and you have to write down license data provider name is equal to data and return type should be 2d object 
it's mandatory it's mandatory okay because you have to return the object so when your method returning the object what you have to do return r e t u r n return do new of that's how we make the array object right object and here in curly braces right here username comma it's a 2d array guys hope you are understanding this 2d array concept it's very simple i'll explain you anyways one more time so have username password now control c v and so how uh, what we are doing here is i'll just rewrite that one second mm, what is the problem here yeah that's fine and then semicolon so we are returning now 2d object right why why i'm writing like this i will explain you let's say you have a main method how do you create array object very simple i have to create array object so let's say of type object so we write obj is equal to new of that's how we write right new of this and we can give the size you know three, three three that's how we create the object right that's how we create you know object of array same thing i'm doing here but after that i'm doing one more exercise so either i can do like this either i can do you know uh, obj obj 0 0 is equal to so either i can write you know 0 0 and i can write this data so either i can write like this 0 0 is equal to username right again 0 1 is equal to password so just make you know 2 is to 2 is enough right 2 is to 2 or you can just make you know it's better 1 is to 1 no yeah size should be 2 0 1 right so either you write like this again you write so again you make you know 1 0 1 1 again you make 2 0 sorry you have size only 2 so you cannot make two, more than 2 here right so either you write like this either you write like this so here i was saying that either we can make like this okay uh, that's how 2d works same thing i'm doing here not nothing different so either you return this or uh, if you if you would like to use like this so just paste it here okay just paste it here and uh, comment this line okay and you can just you know return obj so this is also fine this is also fine okay this will also work out now we have a data provider which has two record what i will do here is now i'll use test and i'll use data provider okay and uh, in bracket i'll write name is equal to uh, name is equal to uh, uh, this is the data provider name the data okay so we can write like this so the data provider name is equal to uh, why it is giving error so not give error that's how we write so one second uh, let me check let me check or i think the data provider is equal to this data yeah got it so we can just write data provider is equal to this data now what will happen this test will run for two records this test will run for two records you should run that okay and i will comment this one guys because i i don't want this to be executed so i'll just do a multi-line comment okay i'll do a multi-line comment if i run that my test should run two times okay my test should run two times i'm getting a failure you are okay yeah this is awesome we are trying to pass two parameter but your method takes zero right 
you will get this message when you are trying to pass two parameters you are getting zero why because we are using data provider when you are using data provider you have to make two variable here right if you not make two variable your test will not work so this a will map to this and your b will map to this again your a will map to this and your b will map to this so now when i will run that when i will run that it will run for two times you can see that your test is running for two times now just to just to explain you i'll make it one one and i'll make two two right so hope hope you guys are understanding how to use data provider right so this will help you to run your test for multiple data so if you want to increase the size just increase the size three 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 and uh, use more record here use one more record here make it here two zero two zero now this is very awesome it will work for three times now it will work for three times now it will work for three times now again three parameters so we are supplying now three parameters okay so what we need to do this you don't change j value you don't change j value keep three okay j value you keep three j value you don't change so now you have two zero two one okay so don't change the j value okay your only i value change the i value because you want to do 0 0 1 0 2 0 2 1 so don't change the j value j value because you want to keep only two record but you want to write three times so see here it is getting executed what i did here is when we write three which means it will go till 0 1 2 when i write true means 0 1 2 so these two will not change but my array will change array is going to be size of 3 into 2 right 3 into 2 so that's how it works and you can see that this is your output it is getting executed three times and i hope that you'll be able to design your own data provider and it's it's very easy i don't know people will get scared about data provider i can easily design right now the last topic <coughs> a very small topic in test ng same thing uh, we can just go here in our uh, test ng.xml and uh, what i can do here is so uh, we can just oh, I have deleted the test from here. Yeah. So we can create one test here. Okay. Uh, how we can create is just copy one little here. And go after test, paste it here, and here just write data provider test. Change to data data provider test, and take this data provider. Test it here. Okay, this will execute. Now the last topic what we have is enabled and disabled test. Enabled and disabled test. Enable and disable test. So you have probably void test one test and you have one more test. Right and this is our test one here we have at test in a square bracket by default okay wait let me let me import the test ng analysis so by default enable which would be true by default enable will be true and here let's say i'm making it false so what will happen where one test will execute other test will not execute uh, usually we don't try it because uh, nobody wants to go manually every time go and change your script which you want to execute which you don't want to execute better you can make a group and through testing your text you can take a decision right. so if you look at now here only one test will execute because one is false one is true so only one test right only one test if I make this as a true, both the test will execute. Both the test will execute, right? Both the tests will execute. Now <coughs> I'll make it false, so only one test test will execute. Also, you can write uh, description of the test. You can write here. Descriptions is equal to uh, 
I am logging test with valid data. That's how we do in the real time. We write the descriptions. So what is the benefit of that? You'll understand. You'll understand. So to know the benefit of this, go to the testengine.xml. We will create one more test here. We will create one more test here. And uh, enable, disable, take this to F2. Take this, come here. Change this name and change this name. Now run this suit. Run the full suit. All the test should be executed. Run as a test in the suit. So all the suit file will get executed. Right? All test got executed. All your test got executed. Okay, so this we have commented actually the first script. I don't want to comment that. I want to execute that. Okay, I don't want to comment that. And also, uh, include test here. I will do sanity. Okay. Now, I will go to testing.xml and I will execute that. Every test will get executed. I will not see anything. Refresh the project. Refresh the project. Go to the test output. Go to the email report. Open with web browser. See, you can see that total ex test case was 11. These are your test scripts. And wherever you have written a description, see, nice, you will get here. Test and with login. You can see the descriptions. So, when you are writing a description, you can see the descriptions in the HTML report. This is your report, right? This is your report, overall report. In fact, so for the parameter, whatever parameter will supply, it will get printed here. And uh, yeah, all the parameters will get printed here. And the descriptions which we wrote here, it will get printed here. This is our description. So descriptions will get printed here, right? And that's how uh, TestNG will generate a report. Apart from that, we have something called index.html. So in fact, we can see once this, uh, this is also good, okay? Uh, you can go here, uh, not this report, you can go to here. So this is the failed scripts, which was failed. And so the past one, these are the scripts got passed. Okay, these are the scripts got passed. With this, we are done with all test ng concepts, which we use in the automations. We are, we are, we are not left with anything. So what I will do, uh, this video will be uploaded here. So if you go to the Selenium video, okay, you have this test ng concept for selenium right inside that the video will be uploaded okay inside that the video will be uploaded and uh, the source code what i will do is the source code i will commit now itself so i'll do a right click and i'll do team and commit so adding test ng code okay i will add all the codes whatever codes we have designed today all the files i will add that I'll do a commit and push so it will get added okay file will get added the test ng file will get added it will get added to this location so browse that so i just copy this i will not browse here i'll go to the browser and browse here okay yeah. so it will add it here and uh one more thing what I'll do is so where is my project locations inside which unit? okay so what I'll do one more things I will upload a test ng file also so that you guys can run that okay so file bit selenium so this is my testing dot xml I'll upload here okay so everything will be uploaded here and I will show you how we can see the code so I've updated, uploaded the test ng.xml also here. Okay, this is XML. So if you click on that, you can see that you know uh, here all test cases are here. Okay, all test cases are here, enabled and disabled test. Whatever test we wrote, uh, all are here, right? The parameters and all that are here. Then if you'll go back, uh, if you'll go to this, you know, SRC Java, click on that, you'll have test ng and you'll have all the classes. So when you click on that, it will open the code for you, right? So you can take the code from here. Uh, actually, you can bookmark this uh, URL. Learn by Hanipatap, Selenium Basics. Not bookmark, you can take a code from here because 
my all the code will be here itself okay see all my repository are here this is selenium basic so if you click on that inside that you have your you know test ng video present here right that's how you can get a code so uh, do subscribe my channel so that you have access to my video and like my facebook page okay thank you guys thank you for watching this